Hello Ravens, welcome back to ONW Now. I'm Jacob Guernsey. And I'm Ainsley Heisey. After Colin Kaepernick initially kneeled for the national anthem in August of 2016, he sparked a national debate over whether or not kneeling is disrespectful. Rowan Stanley sat down with a few football players at Northwest to get their opinion. In light of the recent national anthem protests, different students at Northwest have varying opinions on how it should be dealt with. I think it's kind of their opinion or how they stand with what's happening in America like today. Like, some people are fine with it and don't have any problems, or some other people, like, uh, they see different things or they've experienced different things and they uh, want to change it for the better. But on the other hand, some students think it's disrespectful to kneel for the anthem. When uh, the professional athletes kneel during the national anthem, I can understand their opinion. But then again, I think that it's not right because of what America stands for and that football is like America's sport. Despite its unpopularity, Drew Dumas doesn't think that the coaching staff would have a problem if it were to happen at Northwest. Oh, he would be, he would be pretty much cool with it. He uh, models us like, like to make our own choices and stuff like that for the better or for the worse. And he would be pretty uh, like family friendly with that. Baseball teams from all over Kansas City joined together to raise money for an organization close to their hearts. Let's throw it to Addison Smith and Sarah Miguel for this heartwarming story. On August 7, 2016, the Kansas City Mudcats baseball team lost a valuable player as well as an irreplaceable friend. Caleb Schwab passed away due to an incident at Schlitterbahn Water Parks last summer. To raise awareness for the tragic accident and more importantly to share the love of the game, Perfect Game, Premier Baseball, and the Kansas City Mudcats put together a tournament to raise money. For the Caleb Schwab Can I Go Play Foundation to benefit children that are maybe unable to pay for the sports that they want to play, but they have interest in the sports. The Kansas City Mudcats wanted to remember Caleb in more ways than just one. Something unique my team did this weekend was we all wore the number three to honor Caleb. Because what Caleb was really interested in was seeing people have fun, smiling, having a good time playing sports. For Sarah Miguel, this has been Addison Smith. Now let's send it over to our sports team to give us the latest on Raven Athletics. Hello Ravens and welcome to this week's Game Day Northwest. I'm Landon Daniel alongside Molly Howell. After a tough loss against Goddard, the Raven football team faced off against Olathe South on September 8th, looking for their first win of the season. Raven Nation was out in full force in their neon tonight as Braden Cook gives the pitch to senior running back John Bowman as he rumbles down with, into the 10-yard line. John Bowman gets the next play and he forces it in for seven and that gives the Ravens the lead early. However, defense was on show tonight as the quarterback for South fumbles the ball and then gets sacked by Luke Wellman and Jack Parks and then junior Cole Manning gets his first career varsity interception. It was not enough, however, as South did end up winning the game off of this run, 21-7, and a Ravens loss. It has been a week since the men played due to a cancellation of a game on Friday. On Tuesday, however, the Raven men's soccer team battled to late the South. First half running down the field, the Ravens steal the ball and hit Grant Gertzen with a dime on the way down in stride as he turns and puts it in for the first goal of the game. For the second goal, Chase Kluzman, driving through the defense, puts it right in past the goalkeeper for the second goal of the match. For the next score of the game, the Ravens draw the uh, penalty inside the box, which earns them a PK that junior Chase Kluzman puts in for a second goal of the game. The Lady Raven golf team played at Indian Hills Country Club on Monday. They competed against some tough competition at the tournament. Hole 14, Julia Klein. She drives, down the, she drives the ball on the fairway and chips it up the green. Way to go, Julia. She finished with a nice four. On the same hole, senior leader Rosie Klausner drives the ball hard onto the green to finish with a nice par. The ladies ended up taking fourth as a team, and Rosie Klausner tied for second with a score of 78. On Monday, September 11th, the Lady Ravens tennis team had matches against all of the Olathe schools in the Olathe Invitational. 
We had a huge turnout for the 508 of schools that came together. Fans from all the schools made an appearance to support their lady tennis teams. Senior Kristen Nipp and sophomore Mallory Brown showed up ready to dominate in their doubles. Great matches, ladies. Overall, the ladies had an exponential, exponential night with dominance over Olathe West and Olathe North. Next, we will introduce our first game day player of the week, John Lindsay. Let's send it over to Jack Clayton for more. This week's game day player of the week is John Lindsay, the sophomore goalkeeper for Olathe Northwest, who has found success early in his career. I feel like I've done pretty well for my first five starts and given up three goals in five games, which is pretty good, but I'm working to get better each and every day. After a solid start to the season, Lindsay has high hopes for his team. Uh, we have three wins and two ties. Our ties going against Olathe East and Park Hill South. Obviously, we'd like to get to the state tournament and bring home the first men's state championship. Despite stepping into an important role, Lindsay doesn't struggle with the pressure. I just try to simplify the objective as much as I can, which is just to keep the ball out of the net. And I think the back line does a tremendous job of defending, so I just have trust in my teammates. However, he still has goals for the remainder of the season. This year I'd really like just to develop and to get as good as I can get, and anything that comes along the way is icing on the cake. That's it for game day. Let's send it back to the desk. With homecoming quickly approaching, here's what you can expect to see next week. From spirit days every day to parties at night, students are anticipating a fun week ahead. Attendance at these events is not, not required, but if you'll miss it, you'll regret it. Also remember to participate in the Spirit Days every day. Monday we have our opening assembly. Tuesday there's a grill out in the cafeteria. On Wednesday we have powder puff in the bonfire. Thursday is underclassmen voting. We have the parade and open mic night that night. And then Friday is the closing assembly, king and queen voting, which is for all grades and then the homecoming game that night with coronation at halftime. Get ready to have a great week, Ravens. This fall, Olathe Northwest opened its doors for its 14th year of operation, and Raven pride appears to be at an all-time high. Lena Saturn walked the halls of o &W to see who really knows the history of our beloved Olathe Northwest. How long has o &W been open? Seven, seven years. Eight. Eight years? Seven years? Uh, I think it's 14 years, isn't it? Um, who was the principal before Zach? Oh, the blonde girl. What's her name? Oh, uh, Paz? Paz. Paz. Dr. Paz. Oh, Miss, Miss, Miss Paz. We had another principal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Paz. How many professional players have graduated from O&W? 17. Two. Two? Who has more hair? Coach Mahoney or Coach Graham? Uh, probably Graham. Graham, I think. Hmm, I'm feeling the Mahone dog. Okay. Um, Mahoney. <laughs> Graham. How many boys state championships have we won? Three. Five. Okay. One. Three? <laughs> Negative seven. Not many. Zero. That's zero. Um, how does Rick Setter answer the phone? He picks it up real aggressive and just goes, Rick Setter! <laughs> Rick Setter. Rick Setter. It's Rick Setter. Do you know the first five words to our alma mater? Our alma mater said that's true. <laughs> um, I actually cannot answer that. Our, our alma, alma mater said that's true to all who enter here. Our alma mater said that's true. Um, our alma mater said that's true. Just five. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that wraps up everything we have for you this week, Ravens. Be sure to follow us on Snapchat at ONWNow and on Twitter at ONW underscore Raven Daily to stay up to date with the latest in Northwest news. For Ainsley Heisey and the rest of the Convergence team, I'm Jacob Kernsey. We'll see you next week.